Another Denver County Sheriff's deputy has died of COVID. For us to have two deaths within 10 days is very shattering to the department. The department can't say if deputies are getting vaccinated. If they aren't, the public could be at risk. That is such a high contact job and they have so much contact with vulnerable people. Every vaccinated person wants to win Colorado's new lottery. Problem is, not every vaccinated person seems to have a ticket. My husband checked his record and my son checked his and uh, none of us were in there. Plus, development pushes people out of their homes in Golden. In this neighborhood, the dirt is now worth more than the structures that sit on top of them. And Denver 7 viewers offer the warm Colorado welcome a military family was robbed of. Your story didn't help. Your story was the cause of this happening. Good evening and thanks for watching Denver 7. I'm Ann Trujillo. And I'm Shannon Ogden. Glad you're here tonight. A Denver County Sheriff's deputy has died from COVID and he is the second in just two weeks. Deputy Daniel Duke Trujillo was a father to a three-year-old girl. His Facebook page is filled with posts about his service in the Marines, his dedication to law enforcement, and his disbelief in the coronavirus vaccine. Denver County deputies primarily work within the jail system. And over the last year, more than 160 inmates and 20 employees have tested positive. Tonight, we're going in depth on vaccine hesitancy within law enforcement and the risk posed to police and the public alike. Denver 7's Lance Hernandez begins our coverage. For us to have Two deaths within 10 days is very shattering to the department. Mike Britton, the past president of the Fraternal Order of Police, says he saw Deputy Daniel Trujillo five days ago. The outspoken 33-year-old had been nominated for a union board position. We know he has a young son. He was engaged to be married. And those dreams have now been lost. Deputy Trujillo died last night. He worked in the downtown jail intake area. So did Deputy James Herrera, who died May 16th. He made sure that he did his job and he took pride in it. Herrera's sons say the deputy, who loved fly fishing, treated everyone with respect. He made sure that the people that were there, that were visiting or that were in there, he made sure that they felt like a person as well. Andrew and Stephen Herrera say the sheriff's department needs to do more to protect deputies from COVID. The department's understaffed and that they're working these huge amount of hours in a day, like 12 hour shifts, 16 hour shifts. We don't know if either deputy was vaccinated. I'm not sure, we never talked about it. A department spokeswoman says they've educated staff on how to slow the spread of COVID and on the importance of the vaccine. Mr. Britton says deputies told him the intake area hasn't been deep cleaned for two months. We don't ever really complain unless there's something to complain about. And right now we're complaining because you know what? We have two officers who died of COVID and they both worked at intake. The department says it was deep cleaned this morning and is regularly cleaned four times a day. The Herreras are also upset that their father's death hasn't been deemed line of duty. Former state lawmaker Debbie Stafford wants that changed. She's supporting the first responder COVID-19 presumptive pandemic care act. It's important that we are aware that when somebody falls in the line of duty, it wouldn't matter whether somebody walked in and put a bullet in them or whether an invisible en enemy walks in and inflicts their body. Line of duty designation would provide extra death benefits. Lance Hernandez, Denver 7. Now, for context here, the National Law Enforcement Officer Memorial Fund shows 145 of the 264 officers who died in 2020 died of COVID. And a report from the Washington Post also found vaccination rates within law enforcement to be lagging behind the general population. Shona Hoffman is a professor of law and bioethics at Case Western Reserve University. She can't say why police are reluctant to be vaccinated, but she is quick to share her concerns. It's a high contact job. They're going to be arresting people. They're going to be responding to calls from homes, um, which means they'll be getting into apartments or houses where there are children who are not vaccinated because they're not eligible to be vaccinated. They'll be coming up to people's cars, talking through open windows. It's a very high contact job. And a, a lot of the people they come in contact with are vulnerable. They're in jail, they're elderly, they're children who are not vaccinated. 
All right, now let's go a little deeper here. Many departments and agencies are reluctant to ask workers if they've been vaccinated. Often they argue it's against an employee's rights. However, employers have rights too, and ultimately they do have a right to ask. That is a job-related query, and the Americans with Disabilities Act says you can ask job-related queries to make sure people can do the job safely and don't endanger anyone else. You do have to keep that information confidential, uh, and you do have to make exceptions for people who have medical and probably religious reasons not to get the vaccine. But the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission itself has said that employers can require people to get vaccines or ask for proof of vaccines. Now, we recommend reading the Washington Post report we mentioned above. It contains a lot of good information and greatly informed tonight's reporting. You will also find plenty of in-depth journalism on vaccine hesitancy in Colorado on thedenverchannel.com. A bill aimed at reforming who is in jail in Colorado and for what has been killed and replaced by a less ambitious proposal. The old version required police to issue summons on certain felonies rather than arresting police over them. Now, the new version drops app and says courts may not issue cash bonds on certain felonies unless there's reason to believe that person involved is a flight risk or a danger to others. The bill passed out of the Senate yesterday. It will now be heard in the House. A jury has been seated and opening statements were presented today in the trial of Devin Erickson. Prosecutors say Erickson was as responsible for the shooting at STEM school and the murder of Kendra Castillo as his co-conspirator Alec McKinney. Erickson's defense wants to paint him as a hapless scared teen who feared McKinney and went along with the shooting unwillingly. One of the people who came there that day, the one who secured the weapons and loaded the weapons, the one who snuck them into the school, the one who blasted a hole in Kendrick Castillo and shot two other students. That person is in the courtroom with us right now. This is a case about mental health. It's a case about manipulation. It's a case about how Devin Erickson's home life came undone, leaving him neglected at a critical time at the end of high school. And it's about how a sensitive and vulnerable kid, Devin Erickson, gets roped in to a psychotic cult play by a schizophrenic, homicidal, sick kid named Alec McKinney. McKinney took a plea deal and was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole. Erickson faces a maximum sentence of life in prison without parole. Trial will take several weeks and we will follow it every step of the way. The state's new vaccine lottery has a lot of people double checking their records and then doing a double take. The Colorado Immunization Information System database, database is supposed to contain everyone's vaccine history. A number of people we've spoken with, though, can't find their records. My question would be, is this um, a voluntary uh, database that they're creating? Is it required database? Um, if it's required for providers within the state of Colorado to um, accurately report this information, um, if it's not getting reported, where's the oversight? And I think the state is opening themselves up to some issues um, with it not being fair across the playing field. Today, we were told military veterans are not in the system because the VA isn't currently giving that information out. And the state's working on that tonight. Now, otherwise, we recommend contacting your provider, making sure the correct information is on file. 1,500 people have taken advantage of Colorado's work incentive program, otherwise known as Jumpstart. The state is offering up to $1,600 to anyone who returns to work in May or June. Workers must stay on the job for at least eight weeks to receive full payment. Well, HOAs will no longer be allowed to tell people which flags they can or cannot fly under a new bill. This proposal cleared the House today. It's on its way to the Senate. The Denver 7 has heard from several homeowners who have been told their flags violate HOA rules. This bill does make an exception on commercial flags, so HOAs can still forbid those. A Golden family thought they'd finally lucked out on owning their home. As consumer investigator Jacqueline Allen reports, their dreams were dashed as quickly as they were realized. Give me a trace you. The desire to leave a mark. You mean going between the fingers? Yeah. 
Great. brought Heather Klinsky and her husband to Golden. Well, we've really rooted in this community. We have a lot of close friends. We consider them family. The last five years, raising their boys in a little rent house, they've made a home. We moved here when Lennon was five months old, so they've had every birthday party here. We've had all of our Christmases here. I mean, look at all these emails. So this month, when their landlord offered to sell the house to them, they jumped at the chance to own. Got your hopes up. Very much, yeah. And I know that's a dream that people want, but we were living it and we were told that we were going to be able to keep living it. And then he just ripped it out from under us. Just a week after reaching an agreement, an email. The landlord changed his mind, accepted an offer from a developer, likely building duplexes on the land. Devastated. Lots of tears. Um, husband and I were both very upset. All the people we had in our court, you know, rooting for us to stay here, upset as well. In this neighborhood, the dirt is now worth more than the structures that sit on top of them. Neighbors tell us what's happening to Heather is happening all over Golden. Developers can come in with large cash on hand and outbid almost anybody. Gordy, I have a whole thing. From small town charm to multifamily construction. This is Jacqueline Allen. I'm a reporter with Denver 7. We reached out to Heather's landlord. He declined to comment. But Redfin lists Golden as one of the most competitive housing markets in the country. We're heavily involved in the community. And Heather and her husband, though, don't want to be forced out. They're now house hunting, hopeful. The place they've already put down roots will be the place they stay. Let's see what happens. In Golden. Do you think this is going to all wash away? Jacqueline Allen mm. for Contact Denver 7. We wish them well. Mm. Denver 7 viewers, you aren't just generous, you're observant as well. So yesterday at 6, we told you about the Salas family. They hadn't even been in Colorado for a night when someone stole their moving truck from a hotel parking lot. Within hours of that story airing, someone spotted the truck and called police. Now, most of their valuables were gone, but their children's toys, pictures, and the important personal stuff, that they got back. We've gone on this extreme roller coaster of lows and highs, a loss of faith in humanity, to a few hours later understanding that humanity is the greatest thing ever. Your story didn't help, your story was the cause of this happening. So thank you so much. You've already raised a lot of money to help the family out, but we know they could use more. So to donate, head to the Denver 7 Give section of our website and select this story from the drop down menu. Nice and dry tonight across the Front Range, but over the weekend, more thunderstorms headed our way. I'll have more details with your seven-day forecast. The Avs are still on vacation. The Nuggets are in a race against Dame Tom. And the Rockies are still recognized as a professional baseball team. All that and more coming up in sports.